name is Terry Glover. I'm the founder of the Marketing Meetup, which is a positively lovely community of some 35,000 marketers around the world, united by a mission to educate, connect, and bring people together with kindness. Every week we run free to access events, uh, both online and in person, and it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Thanks so much. Joe, it's such an honour to chat to you again. Um, we've uh, we've talked a few times um, this year and, and for anyone who hasn't met Joe, uh, uh, your your life is about to be changed for the for the best for the better. Um, <laughs> he's a remarkable fellow and and has yeah. helped so many other people and, and just you know when you meet people in your life and you just have a, you, you go out <laughs> feeling like the world is a good place. Uh, this is how I feel whenever I chat. <laughs> so hopefully, whoever's listening on the podcast, you get some of this through uh, uh, from 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 our chat. But thank you so so much for joining us, and um, yeah, welcome. Thanks, um, right back at you, by the way. You're a lovely human. You. <laughs> <laughs> I do I do think there's some good similarities between what we're trying to do with our company. I think sort of you know life and work is serious enough. Um, it's uh, it it's nice to to create something that helps people that it's also done in a way that hopefully makes people smile and feel good about themselves and build people up rather than always ripping people down 100 percent. and like we're recording last thing on a friday as well so we're in real danger because like i think that that fun element and the, <laughs> the sort of yeah enjoying enjoying things for for having a bit of fun and looking after people might come out a little bit more than it usually does first thing on a Monday, perhaps. So, uh. yeah. yeah, definitely, definitely. I've got some beers in the background if, uh, <laughs> if we get, if it gets dry. All, um, why, are they all, why are they all empty, Chris? And <laughs> they're not. <laughs> I'm, uh, yeah, I've got some, can, some cans of beer from can. It's quite cool. Um, uh, anyway, uh, right, sorry. <laughs> So Jay runs the marketing meetup, which is this incredible thing. Um, and it 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 started off, um, I mean, I don't know why I'm going to explain this actually. Sorry, I should just ask you, Jay, how did this thing start off? <laughs> it's been going for, for what, six years now? Four, six years. Is yes. that roughly it? That's right. So the marketing meetup started when I was a marketing manager working in a small company. And I knew that I wanted to meet other marketers and learn about marketing. So the natural solution for that would be to go to a networking event. But whenever I did, and I walked into those rooms, then you'd see people stood in those circular formations. And try as I might, it terrified me. It was, it was a scary experience. And it was not only sort of having to break into those circles to say hello to people, but when I did, then often my experience was people would judge me by my job title or the budget that I, I had. And I know this because I also did it too. You know, when I worked at an agency side and I, I saw someone on the big client side, you know, I'd be like, oh, I really want to speak to you because, you know, you're you're important, you know, and, and, and it was rubbish. So I started an event in, in Cambridge. Um, it was designed to be a place where people could come together to be welcomed in, uh, feel safe, feel included and learn together. And really, that was it. It was it was designed to be something on my doorstep where I could meet folks. But as it happened, 50 people came to the first event and then things started getting uh, more and more busy over the course of time. So fast forward four years and uh, the marketing meetup had 13 locations across the UK and we just started in New York as well. We were running 10 events per month, uh, 10 events, uh, sorry, per year in each location. So 140 events per year um which was mad like because it was just this it was this, this hobby you know that, that sort of turned into something slightly bigger with lots and lots and lots of people uh and then covid hit and then so all of a sudden in a flick of a switch 140 events march 13th 2020 then uh we had to cancel them and we had to find somewhere else where the community could go to come together to learn to connect and, and do it all with kindness and so we moved online and so uh, since 13th of March 2020, then, then we've put together what I think is pretty much one of the world's best webinar schedules uh, anywhere. I mean, by definition, that's world's best. Um, featuring everyone from 
the CMO of Nando's to the CMO of Manchester United to Mark Ritson twice to Rory Sutherland twice and not only the big names but also the practitioners but far more importantly every week when we run these events uh, you go into the chat feature of a marketing meetup event and you find just the most lovely people who are coming together who are curious wanting to learn wanting to get better and find kinship with people who feel a little bit like them who share those, their experiences and so over these past two years then the community has grown from some 10,000 people to about 35,000 people and growing rapidly um, we've also now reintroduced our in-person events uh, so we're now running I think, 10 locations across across the country yeah as well as maintaining our webinar schedule as well which has been it's been ace and like i think like to cap off the story i think the thing that i'm proudest of is that like i still feel like that terrified 24 year old when i walk into a lot of events like if i go to other people's events it's not because they're bad it's just because i'm not playing on my field anymore you know but i know that i can walk into a marketing meetup event and the culture is such where people are genuinely there to look after each other and it feels welcoming and it feels great six years on i still think we're staying true to the values that we're set up in which is just amazing because it's good times i get to spend my time with nice people like you chris which is, which <laughs> is good good for the soul <laughs> yeah no no and needed in life um yeah i mean i i was looking at some of the the, the talks you've had recently i mean it, it kind of goes across everything it's like you know how to tell stories on youtube to you know how to do marketing that's not greenwashing to you know neurodiversity as marketers and then i think you've even had one on on the sort of new um google search that's right ranking yeah. thing is it google analytics four or something that's um, right yeah yeah i think coming up i mean it, it's just interesting it's like these are all kind of I guess these are all they all end up a lot being subjects that whether you're whether you're doing marketing for a fish and chip shop down the road or for yeah. uh, you know Procter and Gamble, you still kind of need to know these things. And if anything, if you're doing it for the small people, you need to know them even better than the the, the, the bigger ones because at least you know they have tons of support and lots of lots of budget to to try and throw at things, and you can try multiple pronged approaches. But if you're a smaller individual marketer i guess it's much much harder i mean we, we, you probably had the same thing growing your own business yeah. as well i guess absolutely i mean so i i come from a world where so all of the market or both marketing positions i had so i did one in-house for a conferencing company um so that was actually my grounding on a lot of sort of the learning and development that i did so and a lot of the values that i learned the company was called business of software um and they put on great events and they had people like Rory come and speak on the regular and, and stuff like that. So that's where I was exposed to a lot of them. Um, but that was a three person company. And then I moved from business and software to uh, an agency called Genie Goals, which was um, a slightly larger company that it had sort of 30 people working in the agency. But I was the only marketing person in, in that situation as well. And I think that's a reality that most people forget when they come to speak about marketing, certainly within certain circles, is that as much as, you know, there's the, the big budget campaigns for the Patagonias, the Nikes and, and whatever of the world, reality is that sort of, I don't know, 70% of marketers are sat on an, on an industrial estate by themselves, having to convince, you know, Larry, who lives down, you know, down in the department next door to try and get involved in a TikTok with them. It's not the sort yeah. of, it's not the, the the high big budget stuff that's the reality for most marketers so I, I definitely empathize with those folks who sort of are by themselves or in the small team and they're having to convince people of the value of marketing or being passed down work and said can you make this a little bit more jazzy and <laughs> 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 all the time too um and so you know I, I think i do have a lot of empathy for folks who have to wear a lot of hats on the daily and sort of uh, pick up a lot of different things which is you know i think if you attend a marketing meetup webinar each week then you're probably mm. picking up a good mixture of strategic and tactical stuff that you can sort of take and apply the next day as well sort of be told how to think about things so i do think that's one of the most important things and i know that this is a lot about what you do as well it's not necessarily saying here's what to do 
is quite a lot of, of about sort of saying here's how to think about it now go and apply it in your own context um, which is important yeah i think it's that it's it, it's sort of almost um i don't know whether this this is right but we were having a conversation about this the other day about you know are the are the soft skills the new hard skills mm -hmm. as though it's sort of yeah in the, in the past you used to always have to work with your hands or you'd have to build something or in maybe in if, it, if it's a bit more recent it would be you know knowing how to use excel to create something or or using having to use photoshop or something like that but there's so many tools that you can use like if you if you're a marketer and you had to do a lot of things you can go onto canva and you can find a great template for this and that and i mean if you just fast forward five years ago just you couldn't kind of do that you know, and go back a little bit further it was even more impossible so i think it's sort of the the stuff that that you're talking about and i think we talk about as well which are these kind of the softer skills which i think is a terrible word for it mm. um because they're not i think <laughs> by calling them soft it appears that it, it sort of maybe feels like it's not as important as the hard skills but they're yeah. the, these kind of skills of problem solving of, of being able to think creatively mm -hmm. uh, but just becoming more and more important in in the world and and in particularly in the business world um if you want to adapt and survive I, I think that's the thing right you know so folks say um marketing moves so fast and you could i'm sure finance people say that i'm sure operations yeah. you know yeah there'll be versions of that exist outside of the marketing sector right um but for the most part i think you're right you know these sort of core essential skills that you can develop and think about um we are spongy masses you know which don't change all that much so if you can problem solve but equally if you can listen to people like rory uh again it's the third name check on this one it must be <laughs> <laughs> the association yeah. with of course um but uh you know if you can learn the fundamentals of of being a person in work then then really the the, the big changes don't feel quite as intimidating in a way you know and, and i think that's that's certainly what I like to focus on in terms of my development is what stays true, you know, rather than focus on what changes, what stays true. Um, I think that is a, a far more useful skill set in a way. Of course, there's stuff at the implementation age that you need to be keeping yeah. up with, but you know, I think 90% of the game is is what stays the same. And uh, that's, yeah. that's also really fun to investigate as well. I think Jeff Bezos agrees with you. That was his yes, thing, wasn't it? It was like, it's quite, isn't it? <laughs> yeah it's not like uh what 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 what's gonna what's going to be the same thing that people are, or was it he was saying people always and he can't see that in his lifetime anyone will ever want stuff not you know delivered slower like yes. <laughs> it's like they'll always want stuff delivered as soon as possible when they buy it and they'll always want it to be as quick and efficient as it can be and so that's the thing that they focus on how they do it and the tools that they use vary with whatever technologies and tools are around but that's your guiding guiding lights kind Absolutely. of uh, Absolutely. makes makes sense um so yeah in, i mean how how did you get the confidence to do this was this a transition or was this like you, you know spur of the moment typed uh, out an email and said hey i'm going to do a meetup do you want to come up i mean you, you you said that you were you know not an extrovert uh, that you're you're introverted and that, how did you how did you get to do that what was that journey was the thought process <laughs> yeah yeah well i mean like on, on the last question there on what was the thought process then i don't think there was too much of a thought process at all yeah. uh, minus perhaps does this thing exist no uh okay i'll do it then <laughs> like all like all great entrepreneurs <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe i think uh and I, I think that was the long and the short of it really in a way it was just like um I see a problem and, and there wasn't a solution so so go and do it and i mean the way that you phrased the question at the moment at the, at the beginning was like how did you get the confidence to do it which implies that i'm confident now which is funny because like a couple of days ago in fact i've had the experience twice recently where i've watched videos back of myself that have been taken in the past sort of six weeks and i'm sat there wriggling and jiggling and, and, and shuffling and, and and not very good with my words and all that sort of stuff so like it's it's a journey it's a it's a real bloody journey and, and at the beginning six years ago then i was just a little bit less far on that journey and so 
I probably had the confidence to put an event up on Meetup. Uh, but then when I saw 100 members there, then I sort of had to, the next step of confidence to go, oh, well, I better do something about this. And then I yeah. had to stand at the front of a room and present it. And the amount of <laughs> feedback I got back at, at the beginning where people were like, yeah, you were clearly nervous, but, you know, it's quite endearing. And actually that yeah. was both useful and not useful at all. Right. Because then I thought I had to be the, the nervous, endearing guy. So I really held on to that <laughs> persona for much longer than I knew. Yeah. But I think all of it, like I did, I definitely like if there's new stuff. I think this year I've been a lot better at approaching new stuff with more excitement than anxiety than I ever have been. Yeah. But up until this year, so we're speaking about a five year journey or we'll call it a 29 year journey, then like I would have been just terrified by new things and change. <laughs> so mm. so yeah. I'd say confidence only comes through a series of, of, um, doing the thing and then it becoming less scary um you also referenced in your question about introversion there as well and so the way that i tend to think about it is really that all i've done and probably i don't know whether this is advice i don't think it is advice the best piece of advice is never to give advice that was that was from my dad <laughs> but um all i've done is created a field that i feel comfortable playing on which means to say right. You know, like I, at the beginning of the marketing meetup, I also I almost imagined it like a football field. And I was just playing by myself. I sort of had like this, had a football and sort of like kicking it around by myself. And now six years into the journey, I've just got thirty five thousand mates who are who are happy to play that too. But if I step off that field and I go into say, you know, you, you got you got your spaceship behind you. You know, so if I went into <laughs> into NASA and started trying to tell yeah. it, I won't be able to do it. I'd be exactly unconfident, you know, in that moment. I'd yeah. be more introverted than ever. And so all I've done really is recognizing myself that there's there's places where I can play strong and, and there's places where I can be useful and helpful. Um, and those are things like putting on a good event. They're things like writing on LinkedIn, writing full stop, the things yeah. that I enjoy. And I think I'm okay for speaking from time to time. So those are those are, those are my things that I can I can play happily with, and therefore I do. Um, but yeah, confidence is it's a it's a funny thing, and, and so is introversion. Because I guess the last point on that introversion is that it's so situational, you know. And, and like you and I, you know, I felt like I was being a bit cheeky at the beginning of conversation and stuff like that. But there's no way I'd be like that in a big group situation. So it's because I'm comfortable, yeah. with it, you know, and I like yeah. being. I like being around you and this is yeah. a, this is my field you know this is my field that i'm playing on but right. get me get me somewhere else i might not be the same you know so. <laughs> no it makes sense i i guess and also you can always tell very instinctively when someone's being genuine or not genuine so mm. it makes sense that your initial feedback was you know <laughs> they really enjoyed that finally there was someone who was standing up i think in in the marketing world and in general it can be a bit sort of car salesman-y yeah. um not that necessarily all car salesmen are horrible um but yeah a bit kind of a bit sort of <laughs> yeah, yeah overconfident like this is how this is like you know how come you don't know this look at all the amazing stuff that i've done um so i'm, I'm not surprised that, that, that the way that you've approached it is is has been so successful and it's just so nice to see and what i thought was very interesting as well was seeing that you actually have more marketers turn up than people in in advertising which is also fantastic because i think in advertising if you're in an agency um there's lots of marketing -y stuff going on your whole world is just marketing and advertising but if you're in the marketing department you're dealing with people who have nothing to do with marketing all the time and so you're sort of yeah i i, I mean you must have had some amazing conversations about that and and, uh, and some bits of feedback from it i imagine it's interesting actually because i think you're the first to actually point out that distinction in a way um i can see how it happens and so yeah there's a great podcast that i listen to at the moment uh, on strategy showcase uh, with a guy called fergus Fergus, I'm not going to butcher his last name, but like great, great podcast. And it's funny because you go in and you listen to it and like I'm massively overexposed to marketing theory, you know, so I can keep up. But like 
Fergus is asking like really interesting, deep questions about marketing strategy and implementation that is just like, it's amazing and it's assumed knowledge and it's off the bat and like the guests are keeping up with them and they're bouncing back and forward and it's like, it's so interesting. But, but the context is that when we go into the marketing meetup, then, then you're right, you know, these marketers are coming from all kinds of levels and all kinds of situations and the conversations that we're having is, how can we convince the boss that spending an extra 20K on a, on a bit of marketing budget, you know, will be a valuable thing to do. Uh, you know, how can I convince people of the value of marketing? You know, it, it's all of these conversations where people aren't already bought in. And so that's a lot of where we spend our time is, is having these conversations about like the value of marketing and, you know, where I should prioritize. And I think it goes back to that word that you used a little bit earlier about confidence, because I think there's a lot of marketers who have their confidence consistently on their mind just having to prove the value of marketing. Um, it's not an extreme thing, and that may or may not be an advertising slash marketing, advertising slash marketing distinction, but I do think it's something that does exist in certainly within the community that, that I serve, you know, so it's uh, it's yeah. yeah, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, what, what are some of the, are you, you've spoken to so many amazing people, like are there, what, are there any sort of, uh, I guess uh, I, I was going to say favorites, but I don't know whether that's the right the right <laughs> word because I'm sure they're all your favorites because they're all amazing. Um, <laughs> are there any that stand out recently that that sort of uh, off the top of your head that, that you're like, yeah, that was uh, that was pretty amazing. Um, <laughs> I've started, so I you know I've become a real sort of storytelling person in a way. You know, I, I just love right. how people present. You know, because of course. Um, as I say, I'm massively overexposed to a lot of this theory now, so I'm not saying I know it all because I definitely don't, yeah. but I yeah. may have seen a version of it before. And so I'm really sort of gorging out at the moment on great presenters. And so there's been a few. So the one that you referenced at the beginning about Google Analytics 4, there's this lady called Mary Awusu, and she's a professor over in a Kansas College in America. And Mary is gifted with clarity. She is generous, but like every word is precise and to help the people she is helping. And like, so she went through the Google Analytics 4 thing and, and she did a live demo, which was just mad. Like, I'd never do a live demo because, like, it would definitely go wrong. But she, yeah. I think there was like 500 people on the call or something like that. She did like 500 people through, like, setting up their Google Analytics 4 account just like that it was just so natural it was an incredible thing to observe um so mary wusu is is a gifted communicator and clarity um and i think there's a lot that anyone could watch from just sort of observing her in action the next one is a, a guy called max hopkinson who also happens to be one of my greatest friends in the world and i think what max did particularly well in his presentation so max was speaking about public speaking and his journey right. right and he started his presentation by uh sharing a personal story about having panic attacks when he went to go and give some uh, public presentations and he shared his journey about how he got a little bit better a little bit better a little bit better and then crashed again and did really what really badly again and then got a little bit better and etc and then in the rest of his presentation, he kept going back to that story. It was like a comedic callback, you know, where they do a joke at the beginning and then yeah. come back at the end. And like, it was just genius because like, it grounded the talk so, so well in like a personal story and a bit of vulnerability, but then also yeah. the lessons learned. And like Max's talk was like a quintessential, like here is how you should present uh, type of thing. Cause it was just, it was just really, really good. Um, the last one I sort of, share with you was actually the following week with a girl called ellie middleton who spoke on neurodiversity now ellie is someone i've learned a bunch from uh just through following her linkedin but again ellie opened up with a, a really personal story and then went into seven tips that were just like bam 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 on how to be uh how to consider neurodiversity as a marketer and again it was just so wicked to sort of see how like it was it wasn't in the same way as max called back she actually shared the story at the beginning and then she just went through the tips 
but like because it had that grounding in humility in authenticity yeah. and like everything flew uh, afterwards and people were like uh, just relating so much in the chat feature and so yeah i mean i have a bunch of interesting conversations but actually how those conversations uh, take place is the most interesting thing at the moment and i think the common themes are pretty much always a sense of authenticity humanity and, and vulnerability really so yeah that's where i'm that's where i'm at <laughs> yeah no it's well i'm yeah storytelling i think is a skill that's just it's so underrated like i think it's sort of one of those things that should be in all schools uh, so like maybe the the first thing you learn when you go to a business is like, <laughs> this is how to tell our story this, like, is, this is how to tell a story full stop yeah there's a story in everything the last webinar that we did of the last season was um how to do social media in quote unquote boring companies and like so it was the webinar which had the most signups that we've ever had for a webinar which is crazy given the speakers we've had um but i think the title was one that resonated with the community but the the i'm going to give away the talk here but essentially it was there is no such thing as a boring company there is always right. something that is interesting to someone that is useful to someone that is entertaining to someone you just got to find it you know and and and, and that's that storytelling right and um, yeah it's great it's really really cool yeah, I remember. I mean, it reminded me of that sort of was it John Hegarty when he was trying to find interesting stories about uh, Audi, I think it was, and he sort of went over to the uh, the places where they make the cars, and uh, just he was looking at the posters that the that the people had up on the walls, and there were there were a whole load of like sort of slogans that people had written up, and someone had written up that sort of. I'm going to butcher this terribly, but it was, uh, what is it, Audi Vorsprung der Technik or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if anyone German is listening to this, I apologize yeah. profusely. Yeah, um, I am not associating myself with this. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he was saying that, that he asked you know, what it meant. And it was sort of, sort of all about you know, moving innovation through technology and moving forwards and all that sort of stuff. And that you know, it was how he found that interesting story, which then became fundamental to the, to the brand. There's, I think it yeah you're right it's like sort of looking deeper and um yeah it's fascinating anyway sorry the the other thing i was going to ask which you mentioned actually a little bit earlier you were saying oh i really enjoy you know writing on linkedin and mm. and uh, and just posting stuff up on there and i i mean i'd imagine that must be a really good place for you and i think we're something we've been bad at and we're trying to get much better at mm -hmm. uh to grow your business is on on LinkedIn, so it's kind of where where a lot of these these people sit and where they're lo looking for advice. Mm -hmm. And it, it is a work platform. And um, yeah, I mean, what when you're how do you how do you discipline yourself to write that? Is that does it just come naturally? You're like, oh, I've got so many things in my head. I'm just going to write this down. Da, da, da. There we go. Brilliant. <laughs> drop drop the mic and <laughs> go and have a cup of tea. Or... <laughs> it's a muscle, really. Um... Right. I, I'm, as I say, I'm now six years into the sort of building that muscle. So, uh, quite sadly, you can experience the thing and you can think, "Oh, there's an update in that," you know, and and, and yeah, and that becomes quite naturally. I mean, if I was going to recommend someone to get into the flow of things, then the first thing I'd recommend is that they start by commenting. You know, just get used to writing on the platform because I think right. there's pressure, much in the same way as networking, where people say feel the pressure to look smart you know actually right. the same applies on linkedin you can ask questions and you can comment on uh, content that's already been produced you don't have to be the content producer so once you've done that then you feel a little bit more comfortable on the platform and you can sort of say yeah you know that's that's you know that's where i'm feeling comfortable now can i stretch it can i post you know can i do yeah. something myself but it may be that you're influenced by someone else who has posted something and you want to provide an opinion or it may be that you've seen something in your own life and you're like, yeah, you know, actually, I want to share this. I think the difficulty yeah. with LinkedIn, for me at least, as someone who spends way too much time on it, is that there's certain tropes now that exist on there. And actually, if you sort of recognize and see those tropes enough on the regular, then it's quite hard to write something without sort of falling into the trap of being a douchey LinkedIn post. And so, right. <laughs> and so you know, like, at that stage, then then you're buggered uh, because you yeah. question everything. But I think when you're starting 
you just got to get out there. You got to do it. But I, I, I struggle with it slightly because I think the people who are encouraging you to post on LinkedIn every day of the week are also probably LinkedIn coaches. You know, they're probably right. marketers who have a vested interest in in making uh, the LinkedIn platform more busy. I do think it's an amazing opportunity to be surrounded by professionals, to be having conversations yeah. with them. But I don't think it's a be all end all in business. I don't think any social right. media is. I think you have right. to figure out what works for you. Um, yeah. So really, I, I think one of the mindsets that is most useful for LinkedIn is, do I want to post? And if you actually do want to post, then do it. But if you don't, don't feel like you're forced to, because actually, you know what, it's, it's not that. It's not all that. None of it is. You know, there, there are plenty yeah. of ways to grow a business. Um, and, yeah. you know, that is one of them. But there are many, many more. <clears throat> well, so, what, oh, sorry. What, what have been, the, I mean, for you, what have been the most, uh, what have been the most kind of standout things that you've done in your business to, to grow it? Are, are there Are there some things that you do where, you, you know, every now and then you just do something and it, and you get these massive peaks or is it more just a you know steady and showing up kind of rins the race I, I remember reading i think you said like sean paul is it is that the rapper <laughs> like yes. gave you a shout out and that that was like a, i mean that must have been pretty huge that was funny yeah no, that, was, <laughs> that was one of my funniest moments in that video um we just paid him on cameo so that was so that specific <laughs> was like um you were right at the beginning yeah, of COVID. And you know when people are doing like all of those um, we're there for you adverts and stuff like that and, and like yeah. they all look the same and sounded the same. Well, that yeah. was in that moment we, I think we paid $80 or something crazy <laughs> and, and just got Sean Paul to say to the marketing meetup community, we're there for you. You know, and it was wicked. It was so good. And like I've never had a response like that from people who said, you know, the best email I've ever received and, and all that stuff. It was great. Um, <laughs> I mean, there's a few things that we've done for the marketing meetup. So as a marketer, I can't help but think of it in sort of awareness, consideration, purchase, you know, et cetera. Right. But I mean, the most significant and useful way that we've grown the community is through word of mouth um, because, you know, we get a bunch of lovely people. Well, where do you find more lovely people? Probably their friends. And so that's that's where we started out. Um, but word of mouth doesn't happen without you prompting it in some way. So. I mean, having an excellent product, you know, our webinars, our events, they're excellent products. People want to come along, you know, people want to get involved. So so that's certainly one of them. But it is also about creating moments. Actually, sorry, let me backtrack a little bit there on the excellent product thing. Um, have an excellent product, get people along, but then ask them uh, to share and to bring people along. So right. I've, I've noticed that with Marketing Meter, people like we say, we have a webinar and it's said, thanks for being here, full stop. You know, people don't tend to share it. But if you say, thanks for being here, and by the way, would you mind sharing this with someone who is near and close to you? It's amazing how that prompt, even though it's seemingly obvious, uh, actually genuinely does get results. So yeah. the first thing I'd say is, you know, sort of prompt, prompt word of mouth. The second yeah. thing is make word of mouth things, things that are worthy of word of mouth. So examples like the Sean Paul thing, um, which, you know, are these little bumps in engagement. Uh, the third thing is that, you know, I don't think we can be ashamed of this because it's true, uh, but build off other people's audiences. And so um, we've yeah. had the likes of Mark Ritson speak a couple of times, and every time then there's a little bit of a bump in, in engagement um, and yeah. a little bump in, 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 uh, in sign-ups for a newsletter. So build off other people's audiences by collaborating with them in a very meaningful way that adds value to everyone involved. But then when we sort of move into the more consideration based stuff, I think there's also a lot to be said for like, have a place for this stuff to go. So for example, right. you are generating a bunch of word of mouth. Well, that's great, but people are going to forget tomorrow if they haven't got anywhere to go. And so for us, the newsletter has been insanely useful um, and in many, many ways. Um, so the first way is on a very day-to-day -day level, it helps us advertise the events, we get people along. Yeah. It's a retention thing, it's an awareness thing, uh, it's a bit of a consideration thing. We get people coming along to the events and, and that's great. 
Um, but then also it, it helps us protect the growth of the business to a certain extent. And I'll give the example that when COVID hit, then we had like 12,000 people in meetup.com that all of a sudden we couldn't access. We had 2,000 people on our newsletter. And so all of a sudden, you know, the, only, the only useful resource that we had to sort of communicate with our community and say, look, we're here for you, was the newsletter. Had that not right. existed, you know, we wouldn't be stood yeah. here having this chat. And so um, in terms of growing the business, it's really, really important to do the awareness stuff. So I didn't even mention the likes of LinkedIn and, and stuff like that. I just, yeah. you know, I just but I didn't even mention events but have somewhere for that to go as well. Somewhere that you can protect that isn't going to be uh, beholden to algorithms because um, that's a dangerous place to be. In. What, what, what's the, I mean, you, you, you don't need to ask this if you don't want to, but like roughly, like where do you get money from to do this? Or is this just like something that you just love doing and it's just, you know, you're, you're that amazing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's just, you can live off uh, air. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, no, the events are sponsored. So um, yeah. we have a series of incredible sponsors who sponsor either uh, the live events, um, on, oh, or sorry, they're all live events, but either the digital events or the in-person events. Uh, that's our prime source of revenue right now. Uh, we Anyone also listening, by the way, email Joe immediately. <laughs> start, start giving him some money so he can carry these on, please. <laughs> yeah, well, it's actually I'm in a really nice place to be in at the moment. Which yeah. is for the first time in a couple of years, we've actually got a sponsor slot available. So, like, that's, oh wow, that's crazy. So I'll call, I'll, I'll call you after this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's good. Um, so, so yeah, uh, the events are sponsored, which actually. I think if you get some really great sponsorship relationships, most of our sponsors have stayed in for like the past five years, which has been amazing oh, and, and grown with us. Um, but I think they do that because they kind of get it. You know, that they get that sponsorship is probably an awareness-led activity. Um, right. And, and so therefore, you know, that's, that's how they judge success. So that's been wonderful. Uh, we also have things like our jobs board. So, I mean, I think, the thing about all of this is that I'm not a material person at all, really. Yeah. So the goal is not uh, mad profit. The goal is just impact. And so something that I see that's wrong with the employment industry right now is that people don't list salaries on their jobs. Uh, and I think it's crazy. I think it's crazy on both the behalf of the potential employee because they don't get the information they need to apply. But I think it's a waste of time for the employer because they get a bunch of irrelevant applications yeah. from people who aren't uh, getting the information they need. And so with our jobs board, we said we only list jobs where the salary is listed. And that's probably a terrible commercial decision, but it brings in a little bit of money every month. But I'm able to sort of scream and shout about these wonderful companies who I feel are doing things the right way. Uh, so that's another place. The third place are, they, are, are the jobs from all over the world or are they just sort of mostly uk based primarily uk at the moment um right but you know there's no reason why it should be that way other than so it's about 75 to 83 percent of our audience our community are based in the uk presently um but that right. is some 17 percent sort of distributed throughout the rest of the world so um so yeah, the, the community is large and distributed for sure. <laughs> yeah. um, and then the Sorry. other one that we're doing at the moment is is our subscription platform, uh, TMM Plus, with sort of the next level of available content, which is a little bit more is is shorter, is curated, how to based content. So, um, but actually, if I'm being really honest right now, then if I was going to have my money, I put into forty two courses right now rather than TMM Plus, uh, because we're in the process of developing it and making it better. So we're recording in 2022. Uh, in 2023, second half, then I, I'll... Uh, I'll, uh, <laughs> I, I'll yeah. Might, I might. Swap, I swap your subscription. No. Or just buy another one. Yeah, yeah exactly. Think, I'd say invest. The in. other thing, Joe, is that like I know that we want to try and do something together anyway. So we'll we'll... We'll figure it out. Um, it'd be amazing. I think there's, 
there's a there's such a massive overlap between what we're trying to do anyway um so yeah if any if anyone uh yeah watch this space we'll, we'll figure it out <laughs> absolutely um, yeah it's 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 incredible and the and the, the the courses that you've got on the marketing meetup plus the subscription-based things they're um practical uh short videos and sort of how to do particular things so it could be pitching copywriting um yeah the, the practical sort of skills precisely yeah. that. precisely that yeah marvelous <laughs> um that'd be great and uh and if anyone's eating you, all you need to do by the way to to go to any of these things is just the marketing meetup.com that's right. and then you'll find uh all of the uh all the amazing things that we've been talking about we'll obviously put the link as well um i mean i guess that that leads quite nicely on to where where is this going is so is the well, what are the thing what are your sort of yeah your hopes and dreams for the for the future for, for this it's a big question and like up until maybe three months ago i wouldn't have had an answer because i was just enjoying right. every day as it came and, and genuinely enjoying it and i still am but i think the mindset shift that i've been through recently is I want to have an impact and if you have impact then it's good to grow that impact and sort of help more people and if if that's true then you need something worth growing uh, and, and and something you can make an impact with i think for the first time also the marketing meetup is starting to develop a bit of an opinion on things um and so something i'm quite keen on on sort of exploring is how we can influence businesses to really start thinking about the triple bottom line a lot more and and sort of think about people planet and profit not just profit bit right. um, and and really that comes from the mindset that um marketing is a, a set of activities that is presently directed uh, primarily in the direction of commercial benefit but actually it is also just a set of activities can you use the same skills and mindsets to sell an idea or sell a concept or or change the world you know in a, in a positive way for the people that live in it and the planet that we live on and so you know that opinion exists but it's not the only thing we'll be doing we'll also be um creating what i think will be one of the world's greatest sort of learning platforms for people to uh, learn about marketing and the underpinning principles of marketing, the things that stay true 90% of the time, um, that they can take throughout their career. And so, you know, I've got I've got big aspirations for this thing that I think is really aimed at people in in stages of marketing transformation. So, larger organisations probably who have uh, the full range of uh, junior, mid, and senior marketers in their teams. And the, the training programs that we're developing are going to be ones that sort of take people through all of that journey, but also in a way which is curated, meaningful, and brings together the best talent from around the world. Um, it sounds like I'm using a lot of hyperbole, but I just believe in it. I think it's going to be <laughs> good. Um, and so, you know, this is my focus for the next sort of year, is really bringing together yeah. these people, um, you know, and, and creating something that has meaning. Um, and potentially impact and uh yeah that's that's where we are but big things yep. in the meantime you know like on a day-to-day -day level it's all just done with the mindset of just want to help people just want to yeah like, you, you know life's too short to yeah. be doing stuff that isn't meaningful so that's that's where i'm focusing yeah, well, you're doing a ridiculously incredible job, and I have no doubt you're uh, you're going to succeed, and and it will carry on growing and be incredible. I mean, you must be uh, you must be pretty um, you know sleep well at night with the with the comments that you get from uh, from the people who join your meetups. So, I mean, I've I've seen some of them every now and then. Hear hear people talking about it. And it's always in in a super positive light. So. Yeah, congratulations on on being you and all you do and i mean how many people are in your team is this I mean, <laughs> must be right. growing i'm imagining now but right. it's it's just me full time and then we've got l who works part-time we've got james who's one of our directors who does a day a week 
and then we've got a small army of freelancers um, but nice well bravo to all them too <laughs> absolutely absolutely no yeah. it's it's always a team effort and to the community i think that's the final final point yeah i appreciate I'm probably trying to close it down there but um it's always an exercise in co-creation you know like the community yeah. has decided to respond in this way and that's really you know the most important thing that the community is not about me and it's not about the team and it's not about whatever it's about what we decide to create together and we've just happened to decide to create this thing which is pretty wicked so i can take a little bit of credit but really i'm just a spokesperson for a whole bunch of people uh, well done i mean i i think you're a superhero and um, i'm sure yeah. all your community does too um and well deserved and well earned um yeah. I'll, I'll stop uh, flattering you though and uh, <laughs> let you get back to your weekend but but yeah but thank you so so much for joining and i I can't wait to continue chatting and uh, I will be sure to share share this with uh, some more of our friends. I'm looking forward to help to publicize what you're doing with, with our, our community. And uh, I've also, while we've been talking, I've been taking mental notes and some physical notes of, uh, of people to introduce you to for more oh, that's thoughts awesome. from your side as well. But, um, yeah. Thank you, man. So, thank you. Thank you. Cheers, man. Cool. Cheers.